Hello and welcome. In this video, we will cover the grid sizer in WX widgets. Let's get started. This time, I will be using a panel for my examples. We also need a vector of buttons. Note that I've already included the vector header. We will fill the vector with six buttons using a loop. Each button needs a label. It will say button 1, button 2, button 3, and so on. Next, we create a button. And add it to the vector. All right, now let's create a grid sizer. Grid sizers lay out their children in a grid. The grid sizer class has a few different constructors, which all do pretty much the same thing. Let's focus on this overload. It takes the number of rows and columns and a gap parameter, which I'll get to in a second. Let's use three rows and two columns. I'll set gap to 0, 0 for now. Next, we can add our buttons to the sizer. And make the sizer responsible for the layout. If we start the application, we see a window containing six buttons. The buttons are laid out in a grid with three rows and two columns as specified. They are added from top to bottom and left to right within each row. That's why button one is at the top left and button six is at the bottom right. If I resize the window, you can see that children are top left aligned within each cell by default. And of course, the window respects the sizer's minimum size. Remember, if you want a larger initial window size, you can set it manually after calling set size hints. What happens if we add more children than there are cells in the grid? Then we get an error. This could be a problem if you don't know how many children a sizer will have. For example, you may want to add children at runtime when the user does something. The solution is to set the number of rows or columns to zero. This tells WX widgets to choose as many as necessary. So if we run the application again, the grid now has four rows. I can add as many children as I want. The number of rows will automatically be set accordingly. When using a grid sizer, all cells in the grid always have the same size. Let me demonstrate by making one of the buttons bigger. The sizer makes all cells large enough to fit the largest child, in this case button 1. If I try to make the window smaller, you might expect the cells in the right column to shrink, but they don't. All cells always have the same size. Ok, now let's get back to the gap parameter. It determines how much space there should be between cells. 
So if I use a size of 50 by 50, then we see a 50 pixel gap between the buttons, both horizontally and vertically. Let's set gap back to zero and create a size of flags object. First, we will try to set proportion to one. I will use these flags for all the buttons. What do you expect will happen now? Will the buttons stretch horizontally, vertically or both? Actually, they don't stretch at all. This is a bit of a gotcha. Proportion has no effect when using a grid sizer. To make a child stretch both horizontally and vertically, use the expand flag. If you want the children to stretch only horizontally, you can use expand in combination with center vertical. For vertical stretch only, use expand plus center horizontal. The shaped flag works as you would expect. Now the buttons stretch, but they maintain their original aspect ratio. You can of course also specify an alignment without using expand. Both horizontal and vertical alignments work. There is also a sensor method, which sensor aligns the child both horizontally and vertically. Borders also work as you would expect. Let's add a 50 pixel border on all four sides. The result is similar to using a 50 pixel gap except that we also have some empty space around the grid and the distance between the buttons is actually 100 pixels because there's a border on both sides. That's all I had to say about the grid sizer. In the next video, I'll give you a practical example of using sizers in an actual application, the to-do list we made in episode 10. You will also see how sizers can be nested to create more complex layouts. Thank you for watching.